to show you how to make a DIY laptop sleeve. You can make it in any color you want, any fabric, it's reversible, and you can make it for any device you want, like an iPad or your laptop. So this is how you do it. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need, uh, all your basic uh, sewing materials, as well as a hair tie and um, two random buttons. Um, a sewing machine is not required, and the fabric, um, I chose this turquoise color for the lining and this geometric pattern for the outside and also batting for the padding on the inside. And you're just gonna need half a yard of each, but if you don't have batting or don't wanna buy batting, you can also use uh, felt. Felt works okay, a couple layers of felt, depending on how thick it is. Um, and the last thing you're gonna need is your device. So laptop, iPad, MacBook, whichever you'd like. Uh, so your first step is you're going to measure around your device once you put it on your fabric. Um, the height of your device plus half an inch or two centimeters um, all the way around your device. So this is going to be your bottom main la layer and that's your uh, rectangle. And then you're going to take your other two fabrics and lay them underneath the piece you just cut out. Um, I already cut mine out roughly so that I didn't have to deal with all the loose material. So you're going to pin it and make sure it's pretty exact because this is where things go wrong. If you don't cut your fabric perfect to begin with, that's where you'll end up with it not working. Okay. So once you've cut out that, you're going to do the exact same thing but add a flap on the top. So take your lining, your main material, and your batting again, new piece. You're going to do the exact same rectangle, but this time you're going to add a top flap. So just the amount measured to about midway through your device, and that'll you'll be able to see how big you want your flap. Okay, um, and then once you've cut out both of those, so you're going to have your three pieces of a plain rectangle, and then you're going to have your three pieces of a rectangle plus the little triangle flap at the top. So we're going to take our rectangle first. We're just going to relayer it for prepping for our sewing. We're going to start with the lining. And if, you, if your lining has a good side, mine doesn't have a good side, but if it does, make sure the good side is up. Then you're gonna put down your main fabric, good side down, so that those two good sides are together. And then you're batting on top. And you're gonna pin just the one long edge of that and sew a line. Don't be afraid if you don't have a sewing machine because you can watch this other video here. <clears throat> here. <laughs> you can watch this other video here. Um, to teach you how to do a quick sew if you don't have a sewing machine. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's worth it. Uh, so once you've sewn a straight line, it's going to look something like this. So you're going to have it all together, your one rectangle piece, just at the top. Um, and then what we're going to do is flip over the good fabric so that the it looks like the case should with the batting in the middle. And you're going to try to line up the top so it kind of looks like a nice seam. And we're gonna add a top stitch on top of that so that it all looks finished and pretty. What I did was I ironed mine so that everything was flatter and it was easier to sew. You can also pin it if you think you need to before you sew it. So you're gonna go ahead and add that top stitch is what we call it. Okay, then you're gonna get back all your material again. So you have your one piece that's all together it looks like it's coming together and then you have your three pieces that are still separate with the triangle tops or the flap. What you're going to do is reorder them. So you're going to start with your rectangle plus flap piece and you're going to lay down the lining of that good side up. And then you're going to take the piece that we just sewed, sew, sew, sewed, with um, the three pieces all connected at the top. You're going to put the lining down the main fabric up with the seam at the top part towards the flap. And then what comes next is main fabric good side down followed by your batting. So to review, it's lining your three pieces we just sewed together with the lining down the good piece facing up followed by your main fabric good face good facing down and your batting last. Then what we're gonna do is pin all the way around except for about a, 
what is this? Five inch opening? 10 centimeters opening on the top flap. I know it seems weird, but just do it. I promise it'll work out. Leave that open. And the final step before we sew is we're going to get our elastic and I tied it in a knot. I just took a normal hair elastic. It can be any color you want, whatever matches your fabric. You can get a real elastic if you want, but I didn't want to go and buy that. So you can just find a hair tie from around the house and tie it. I tied it in a knot and you could cut off the bottom, but just in case it ever unravels, uh, this would keep it all together. So I just tied it in a knot in the middle and then put the good side in the fabric. So you want the bad part hanging out. The part you can see is gonna be the bad part, the knot and everything, and then put the good side, the loop, um, inside your fabric in between the liner and the main fabric. Okay, and then if you pin that into place, it'll stay while you sew a line all the way around the edge, except for that one place I talked about. All right, this is the fun part, seeing if it actually all worked out. You're going to turn it all inside out really gently by pushing all the edges through and popping it flat. You'll see that hopefully it ends up with um, none of your seams showing through and your batting's all in the right place and it looks good. But we still have one, two last steps. So what we're gonna do to close the hole at the top, you're going to roll in the edges so that it kind of looks like the seam that um, you already made. Um, and then you're going to, I ironed mine first just so it was flatter and easier for me to sew. And then you also might want to pin it so it's easier to sew. And what you're going to do is um, sew a, a top stitch along that whole top flap, just like we did before. So once that's done, it should look something like this. Yay! And that also just secures in your elastic because I'm always afraid the elastic's going to slip out and then that kind of like ruins everything. But yeah. So the last thing we have to do is put on the button. Um, the easiest way to do this is to have a button with the same amount of holes and then you put, so like two holes or four holes, and then you just put your um, device in, you put the flap over and you see where the button should line up and where it should go. Once you've done that, I put a pin through it, took out my device and I was able to line up the two buttons on either side and then I just took a needle and thread and I went in and out and in and out and in and out until it was secure. And that is the end. That's all you have to do to make um, your DIY laptop sleeve or iPod case. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it should probably only take you one to two hours depending on how good you are at sewing. Yeah, I think that's it. Subscribe for more back to school videos. I promise I'll do more videos with Becky because I know I'm, I'm sure you miss her. Um, thanks! Oh goodness!